To build this project, you're gonna need some wood, some pipe, a laffalope, some leather, and of course, some Hawks Works boots from Boot Barn, but more on those later. I started off by using spray glue to attach my template to the piece of wood. Uh, if you don't wanna do this, you could cut a simple round shape using a circle jig or just freehand it. Um, either way would totally work. I'll have a link in the description down below if you wanna print out your own template. Then I use the bandsaw to cut out the shape of following the lines. Now, if you don't have a bandsaw, that's no problem. You could use a jigsaw or a coping saw. Either of those are gonna work great. The key thing to remember here is to follow the line, but you don't want to cut into the line. Leave a little bit of material around the edge so you can sand it back later to get your perfect shape. If you don't have one of those fancy oscillating belt sander things, I think Rigid makes them, you can just use a regular belt sander, just clamp to a table. It's really easy to do. Just clamp this guy up, put a spacer down, grab your part with your template, and then sand to the line. This works really well and I do it all the time. Over at the drill press, I used a half inch Forstner bit to drill the holes for the pipe or the dowels, uh, whatever you'll end up using to hold the guitar. We'll talk more on that later. A quick tip here is to drill mostly through your piece of wood and then flip the part upside down and finish the other direction. That way you won't get any blowout from the Forstner bit. Then I used a countersink bit to drill the center of the part. This is where the main screw is gonna go through the base and attach it to the wall. I then gave everything a quick sanding using some 80 grit sandpaper. And I used my little clamp trick to clamp my orbital sander to my bench so that I could sand the edges of this base pick shape. So I went ahead and I got this all sanded down to 80 grit. We'll finish sanding later on. But next I'm gonna tap the threads for the pipe. Now you might be asking yourself, Jake, why are you using threaded pipe and not like a dowel rod or something? Well, that's easy. I'm an engineer and a woodworker, so therefore I like to make things as complicated as possible, at least more complicated than they need to be. If you don't wanna go this route, you could always use a wooden dowel. Just use a half inch wooden dowel and glue it into this hole, no big deal. To make this pipe tap is actually really easy to do. Simply grab one of your pieces of pipe, cut a slot along the length of the threads, and then use a file to file down one side of that cut. What this does is create some teeth on the threads of the pipe so that as you turn it into the wood, it actually cuts the threads into the wood. Now, one thing to remember here is to go slowly and ensure that the tap goes in perfectly square. It's critical that you double check the squareness of the tap every time you start turning the tap. If you don't do this, you can easily send this tap in at kind of a weird angle and that would be bad. Since this is a pipe tap and it's tapered, it's gonna get really difficult to turn as you get farther into the wood. So what I found was a 13 16 socket wrench actually fit the head of this part really well. Uh, very strange that that worked out, but something to keep in mind, grab some socket wrenches and maybe you can find one that will fit the caps that you used on your project. Be sure to back the tap out periodically and then turn it back in. This will help clear the chips from the cuts of the tap. Once I finished with the tapping, I used some sandpaper to sand down everything to about 220 grit before applying the finish. For this project, I'm going to be using some hard wax oil. This is one of my favorite finishes because it's really easy to apply, looks really nice, and just has this nice wood feel and texture to it because it soaks into the wood and you just get that nice natural grain. In order to apply this hard wax oil, simply 
slather it on nice and thick, let it soak for 15 minutes or so, and then wipe it all back off. You don't want any residual oil remaining on the piece once you're done. And then just let that dry for a few hours and you should be good to go. All right, so while this is drying, we're gonna do a little bit of leather work. Um, yeah, leather work. First time on this channel and first time for me personally. So since we're using this metal pipe into this piece of wood, uh, this is gonna be really hard on the guitar since the guitar is gonna be hanging from this piece of pipe. You don't really want metal on the nice finish of the guitar neck, right? So what I'll do is I'm gonna wrap this in leather and I think it's gonna look pretty nice. So let's go try that out. So I ordered this awesome, super heavy duty leather off of Amazon and then sliced down a width of it, the same length as the pipe that I wanted to use. And then since I wasn't really happy with the color, I decided to dye it black. I had some black left over from my blue burst dye effect guitar video I did a little while back. I'll have a link to it if you wanna check that out. Once I applied the dye, I made sure all the excess was wiped off and then let this dry for a couple of hours. Trimming the leather left the edges exposed being a different color than the black dye that I used. So I added some more black dye around the edges before continuing on. I've never done leather working before, so I had to buy all these tools off of Amazon. I just got the cheap stuff. I think it works fine if this is your first time. So I went ahead and poked a bunch of holes in the leather and then started working on the stitching. Since I didn't have a stitching pony, I decided to use my woodworking screw vise to hold the leather in place. It was a little challenging to get the holes to line up just right, so I used an awl through a couple of the holes while I clamped it in the vise. This actually worked really well. Then I was able to start the stitching. Now I don't really have a good explanation for how you should do your stitching, but there's some really great YouTube videos out there that you can watch and learn a ton about how to do the proper stitching. I used a saddle stitch for this project. This is my first time doing this. The thing to keep in mind is to pick a pattern and do it over and over again and consistently. So in this case, I'm using the right needle goes through the leather and then the left needle comes back. When I backstitched everything, it was really hard to get the needles to go back through those holes. So I had to use some pliers to pull everything through. So I got these leather sleeves done and I'm actually pretty happy with them. For my first time stitching, they came out fairly decent. Uh, stitching isn't too bad, just take your time, go slow, and all that stuff like you usually would do. So the next thing to do is to install these heavy duty sleeves on these heavy duty pieces of pipe and then install them into the base and we can put that on the wall. But actually that reminds me, you know what else is super heavy duty? Hawks work boots from Boot Barn. My friends over at Boot Barn were gracious enough to send me a couple pairs of boots to try out and so far I'm loving them. They're really great for working in the shop. It's basically like four wheel drive for your feet and they even look pretty sweet when you're playing guitar. If you wanna pick up a pair for yourself, I'll leave some links in the description. All right, let's get this thing put together. Once I had the leather sleeves over the heavy duty metal pipes, I just had to turn these into the base Make sure they're really tight. You wouldn't want them falling out on accident and your guitar goes clattering to the floor. That would be a bummer. Before I installed this on the wall, I wanted to make a spacer to put on the back of the base so that it would get like an offset or a shadow line around the guitar hanger. I think this will look a lot cooler than if it's right against the wall. To attach it, I just used some super glue and some activator. Installing this guitar hanger is really simple. 
All I did was use a single screw through the center of the base into the wall. Definitely use a heavy duty wall anchor for this and drill into a stud if you can. I'm almost finished with my custom guitar build, so if you don't want to miss out on that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.